On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we finally talk about when a shadow is forced into the light by Swallow the Sun. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited as well. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. And we're two professional broadcasters mm-hmm. that both love metal, and we love to talk about it, Indeed. too. Indeed. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're just coming in in the aftermath of me spilling a, a good quarter of a beer <laughs> on my fucking table here. <laughs> so that's fun, and I just yeah. realized the beer is still wet. Oh, yeah, you got to... got to make sure... And that the coaster is still a little bit... Well, I mean, that's what the coaster is for. Sh- sure. It is not a is not it is not an absorbent coaster though. No. Uh, these are stone coasters because they looked cool and had uh, phrases in in Finnish and Swedish on them. Did they do they make beer sippy cups? <laughs> I think that's just a regular sippy cup. <laughs> I suppose you could put it in like yeah. a like one of the contigos I've got over there. Oh sure yeah. With the pop tops that are supposed to be for protein shakes. <laughs> but I use mine exclusively for water. All right. But, uh, yeah, like I said in the intro, later mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about when a shadow is forced into the light. It's by a band called Swallow the Sun. They're from Finland. Their names uh, are hard to pronounce. Their names are exceedingly yeah. hard to pronounce. I was going to print off a, a, a sheet, but uh, I I, uh, I can remember the, the two operative mm-hmm. people uh, in the band, the vocalist and lead guitarist. Mm-hmm. Not their full names. Uh, but uh, I can remember their names as well. But extremely Finnish names. <laughs> My goodness. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, this album came out in uh, March, I believe, and mm-hmm. I uh, have really enjoyed it since. So we will uh, we will get to talking about that in a bit. But first, uh, you've had kind of a weird night, if you yeah, want to talk about it. Yeah, I have had a weird it. night. Well, first I went to a t-ball game, uh, which I don't not think... Not that weird. Not that weird. Uh, we, we lost. Uh, that's fine. Uh, it was fun. And uh, then I got a phone call on the way back, back to my car, and it was uh, my baby mom's uh, calling me about our daughter had a seizure. Yep, our, our goodness. Our fifteen-year-old had a, had a seizure in, sitting in a car, and now she can't remember the last couple of days. Yeah, that's well. At least she was sitting in the car, right? Strapped in, and I'm glad and, she wasn't driving because she can't. I mean, she doesn't have a driver's license. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I have a I have a friend who mm-hmm. uh, she had a, a, a brain tumor when we were little, mm-hmm. and. Uh, ever since she's gotten that removed, she's she'll have like periodic seizures to the really? point where it became kind of a, a concern for driving. Mm-hmm. Strangely enough, I only ever witnessed one from second grade when she started, you know, when she had her surgery mm-hmm. to get the tumor removed, uh, all the way up to when we graduated. I only ever saw her have a seizure once, even really? though supposedly it happened. A lot, you know, uh, fairly more often. Did they medicate her? Do you, do you remember that? Probably. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't uh, I don't know. We didn't. I, I never really talked to her about that. Uh, went to college up here with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, didn't really keep up with her all that much in school. But uh, she's married now. Mm-hmm. I think she's got a kid. But uh, wow, or she was pregnant. I think at the very least. Yeah, I, I know that was a continuing problem for her for a while. Right. This is my daughter's second one. She she had one before. Okay. She got out of the shower. She seized out. And she hit her head on a sink. Ooh, that's yeah. not good at no, all. Not at all. Yeah. At least this time she was in the car and mm-hmm. strapped up, and, and they drove her to the hospital. And they, they called the cops, and the cops called her mom. Oh, who who was she with that called the police? Um, just some friends who were her okay. age, like a sixteen year old. The kid, the, and he's they, like freaking yeah. out. Like, ah! so they called like, the police instead of the ambulance. Well, yeah, she was in a car, so they just drove her to the I, emergency I room. I suppose, but they just they wanted some sort of just called nine one one. I Calling guess the because, authorities, yeah. so they know. Well, at the very least, they, they had the common sense to to do that. Yeah, and called some manner of authorities and uh, uh, you know get some help. I'm glad they weren't somehow. too high. Yeah, <laughs> teenagers, <laughs> teenagers, right? No, well, you know. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I broke my motor scooter. You broke your motor scooter, yeah. your Vespa. My, no. <laughs> it's not a Vespa. Uh, it is a nice bike. It's okay, uh, but no, the uh, the clutch uh, the clutch cable broke, so I can't can't drive it. And it's going to be really nice over the next few days. Yeah, it's going to be quite nice. Well, nice is a subjective term. I would, I like to me, mm-hmm. nice is like 
75 with no sure. wind, but that never happens here. No, it doesn't. It, it, it's one or the other. It's either going to be 75 degrees mm-hmm. or it's going to be very windy. Mm-hmm. And you, you have to choose one. Yeah, yeah, you have to choose the nice temperature with the wind or the sweltering temperature with no wind yeah. whatsoever. Right, and high uh, humidity. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at in the season right now. Yeah is uh, we're getting into that stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is still June, so we're not getting quite to the stage where it will never rain again. Right. That's uh, that's not until mid-July. Mm-hmm. Uh, some things going on with me. Spent the weekend at the lake. Yeah, uh, with your dad. Most of the weekend at the lake with my dad anyway. Mm-hmm. Really a, a total of about 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I uh, went fishing in the morning. Caught, uh, well, we caught fish. Uh, none that we <laughs> wanted to keep, though. <laughs> They're all no. the wrong kind of fish. Right. So none of wall, no walleyes. No walleyes. It was uh, not not a single one. Not even a small one. Mm-hmm. I would have been happy if we would have at least caught like a small walleye a that small we threw eye. back. Yeah. Yes, a small eye. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was all smallmouth bass, mm-hmm. uh, catfish, and uh, we never got it in the boat. But I think I caught. Uh, we call them like a drum or a skipjack mm-hmm. or whatever. Sure. Uh, I think there was one of those. Catch oh, any we sturgeon? A, uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, usually you don't catch sturgeon on the, on the lake. A swordfish. Did you catch a swordfish? No swordfishes. No, no paddlefish either. No paddlefish? Uh, uh, we also did catch... Uh, the biggest fish of the day was a carp. Sure. Uh, you as, can eat carp. You can eat carp. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the thing that I... I like, I don't, I don't... I probably ate carp at some... Well, if you've ate a fish mm-hmm. stick, you've ate carp. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. But... Uh, You're a carp muncher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, um, no, the thing I've always liked about uh-huh. about fishing and when you get a carp on the line is mm-hmm. it is always fun to catch because they just do whatever. Like most other fish kind of have a pattern when they fight, yep. you know, on the line. Carp just kind of go at it and just like go Wah! all over the place and it's they're they're fun. Mm-hmm. Like especially a really big carp that is, you know, a very very energized and energetic. Yeah. They will give you a hell of a fight, which is which is a lot of fun. Uh and then you get it in the boat, and you're like, "God damn it! Okay, whatever." <laughs> it's a carp. My dad, my my dad is a good enough angler that he knows immediately what kind of fish is on the line really? for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like he he knows pretty much immediately if it's a walleye or what mm-hmm. whatever it is, uh, or a skate. I don't. Th- I'm pretty sure we don't have those skates. No. Skates are related to rays, aren't right. they? They're they're also similar related creature. to sharks. Yeah. Yes, also related to sharks. Mm-hmm. None of those. No car. Uh, very few to no cartilage. Cartil. Cartil. Cartil- fuck. Fish that have lots of cartilage. Mm-hmm. What is that word? Cartilaginous. Car- cartilaginous. Cartilaginous. Mm-hmm. Is that how it's said? Right. Anyway, yeah. I don't think we have any of those in a no. freshwater lake. But uh, did you see any narwhal out there? Did not see any narwhal. Right. Uh, no beluga whales. No? None of that. Okay. None of that while we're out on the water. Uh, the funny thing is mm-hmm. that I was telling you about uh, that I'll repeat for the listeners mm-hmm. is we were watching uh, uh, Avengers Infinity War. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, in, in the camper because our new camper, or I guess my dad's new camper, it's not, I don't have any part ownership over it. No. Uh, the family camper. The family camper. Yeah. Uh, um, we were watching that on the new TV in there mm-hmm. uh, that came with a camper. And when you, spoilers, when Thanos throws Gamora off of the cliff, <laughs> I had to keep myself from <laughs> screaming, Yeet! <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I used to think that was such a stupid term, yeah. and now I think it's funny. Yeah, my son does that all the time. It's just, it's funny. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it's so funny to me. I, th- like, I, you know, I think it's especially funny when my son does it. Uh, he'll go into the bathroom and I'll have him go, yeet, yeet, and he'll come out naked. <laughs> God. <laughs> Gonna take a bath. Okay, all right, yeah. Good for you, buddy. Go, go for it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Good old kids. Kids are funny. I got uh, my Mastodon LPs. Yeah, you did. Uh, today, I got, uh, uh, they, they're out uh in my with the rest of my vinyl in mm-hmm. my living room mm-hmm. uh, I, I got uh, 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 Crack the Sky mm-hmm. great album and I also got um, uh, 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 the other one uh, Remission Remission I also forgot Remi- about Blood Mountain right because what I, my goal was I want to have all of Mastodon's concept albums mm-hmm. 
mostly because I mean I like everything Mastodon does. Yes. But I really like the album art on their uh, on their concept albums, and mm-hmm. I love the way their logo looks and the way they put the little symbol of the theme in the middle of the logo and the scroll text and everything. Yeah. I love the way that looks. It's great for you know displaying. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that Blood Mountain is also technically concept. Uh, a concept yeah. one because it has that same scroll. It's their Earth themed one, mm-hmm. uh, and I uh, I I was not aware of that. Uh, until I looked it up and was like, oh, yeah, Blood Mountain is a, a concept album for them. So It's also the worst ride at Disneyland. Man. Blood Mountain, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't want to go on Blood no, Mountain. No, you want to avoid Blood Mountain. You really want to avoid Blood Mountain. First of all, the line sucks. Second yeah. of all... You die. Yeah. <laughs> the, the decapitation portion of the ride? Ooh, Not enjoyable. No. Uh, I also, today, I ordered a, a new hat. Uh-huh. I ordered a, a Silent Planet. Uh, they call them dad hats for yeah. whatever reason. It's a baseball cap. Sure. But for whatever reason, they call them dad hats. And I've seen that a lot of bands, when they have that sort of merch, they call them dad hats. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I got myself uh, one of those mm-hmm. uh, just so I don't get comments like, you work for Border States Electric? <laughs> yes. Yes, sure. Yes, uh-huh. I do. Uh, even though I, I like the hat that I'm wearing. And this is nice because it's got mesh in the back, so mm-hmm. it breathes a little bit. But Yeah, it keeps you cool. Yeah, it keeps me cool. Mm-hmm. And it makes me look cool, like an electrician. <laughs> you do look like you're here to fix the... Uh, I mean, I've got, like, the vinyl and right. the, the... The vinyl? You mean the, the flannel. Flannel, God He's damn. wearing vinyl. Yeah, so that's right. I'm wearing uh, Ottoman ring armor made <laughs> out of vinyl... Uh, made out of vinyl discs. He's from S and M Electronics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that yeah. kind of vinyl is what you're going for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I see. Yeah. Uh, other things happening with me. I finally got started with uh, the new D and D campaign that I'm playing in. Mm-hmm. Finally, uh, I, I had been sporadically playing in this other one that only happens about once a month, and we hadn't done anything for a while. Sure. But, uh, um, finally playing in one that's going to be a weekly affair and mm-hmm. not DMing at the moment. Nice. Uh, so I'm I'm happy with that simply because I, I needed a break from DMing, and I also haven't gotten to play regularly in uh, probably about nine months. So I, I really wanted to, to get back into that. Uh, we're going to have a busy day tomorrow. Busy day tomorrow? Yeah. What's going on tomorrow? Well, we got two remotes. Oh, and right. The, and the blood drive and then uh, right. bacon and brew after work. Right. Yeah. We're going to go after work. We can go to the zoo, eat bacon and drink beer. Yeah. That's what you want to do. That's the, the perfect place to uh-huh. eat bacon and drink beer is being around the smell of exotic animal shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. But we did get free tickets and two drink tickets. So indeed, it's worth it. And we got a sitter. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, uh, but yeah, we've got we got two remotes. Neither we're not doing either. No, one. no. Uh, but uh, one of them is from our own parking lot. Yeah, Man. so that'll be that'll be easy. well. I'll have to engineer that one. I'm not entirely sure what the situation is going to be. Whether because like I'm going to be engineering and I'm going to be on the air, but usually I'm only in the office until about four thirty. So right. <clears throat> I don't know if I, I. It'll probably be fine. It'll but it just fun. it just seems weird to me because a lot of times I, I you know voice track mm-hmm. and so if I were to voice track it would be weird because we're going to someone who is right fifteen feet away right you could open the window and yell at him yeah, yeah. I, re- I really could so well, I'm gonna uh, voice track it I I, w- I will be there probably yeah I'm gonna be at home waiting for a sitter I suppose yeah yeah so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna not announce songs I'll just pretend. You know what song that was. Yeah. So that you can skip <laughs> shit if you have to. Uh, other things that are cool, um, yeah. I uh, we've got tentative plans right now to go to the North Dakota Renaissance Fair, the very first North Dakota Renaissance Fair held in Regent, North Dakota. Regent, North Dakota. Where is Regent? Uh, it's down south somewhere in the south, sort of in the southwest part of the state. Uh, do you know where Lemon, South Dakota is? Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, oh, some ways. Okay. I think it's some ways north of Lemon, mm-hmm. along the mm-hmm. the. Uh, uh, Near the Enchanted Highway. Okay. Uh, you know, I've never been the down the Enchanted Highway. Really? Never in my life have I been down. I've been near it, but I've never been down it. Uh, it's uh, it's fairly nice. I've been down on it. Most of, I think most of the times recently that I've been down the Enchanted Highway mm-hmm. is uh, uh, hunting affairs. Going ah. out to like Grassy Butte and stuff like sure. that. Sure. So. Grassy Butt. Yeah, good old Grassy Butt, North Dakota. Yeah. Uh, it's the Grassy Butt that rises over <laughs> the entirety of the Badlands. <laughs> Anywhere in the Badlands, you can uh-huh. look up and there's just those two big cheeks. Two big grassy cheeks. Yep. And mm-hmm. there's a volcano in the middle. <laughs> a chocolate volcano. 
<laughs> on that note. On that note. On that brown note. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do we want to uh, talk about the album? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the album that I chose for this week is one mm-hmm. that I've wanted to do at least once before and yeah. had announced that we were going to do at least mm-hmm. once before, uh, but then uh, uh, backed off on that because it's it's... Goodness, it is a a, a, a sad, uh, morose affair. Mm-hmm. Absolutely gorgeous album. But, gorgeous uh, album. Rooted in a lot of tragedy mm-hmm. uh, uh, in real life. Uh, it's by Swallow the Sun. They're a band from Finland. It's called When a Shadow is Forced into the Light. Mm-hmm. It came out this March. Uh, and the sort of background of this album uh, for them was uh, in 2016, their lead guitarist, whose name is Yuho uh, uh, Raiha, Ray, Ray, Raiha, Raya, Raya, yeah, something yeah. like something like that. Uh, Finish. Um, his girlfriend passed away from mm. uh, uh, cancer, mm-hmm. and they'd been dating since 2009. She was also she was I've heard her described as his life partner as well because right. they were both musicians, uh, both you know doing doom metal. Like they, mm-hmm. uh, as far as mm-hmm. I know, their first like collaboration was on uh, their Swallow the Sun's album in 2009 that she did guest vocals on, mm-hmm. and that's. To, to my understanding, kind of around the time that they met and started dating. And uh, uh, they had worked on a, a project together that was called uh, Trees of Eternity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she died when that album was in post-production. Wow. Uh, hadn't so, been released yet. Yeah, it hadn't been released yet. Uh, right. That album is called Hour of the Nightingale, mm-hmm. which also gives... Uh, uh, there's a, a lyric on that album that gives this album its name. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and you know, sort of a lot of the themes and whatnot. Um, and he's still been releasing. Uh, Yuho has still been releasing music that uh, sort of has her on it, uh, mm-hmm. because since they lived, you know, they they were dating and and always working on stuff together. Right. There's a ton of her recorded material. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a song on this album that has some of her recorded yep. material on that. That's called "Clouds on Your Side." Mm-hmm. Uh, Beautiful song, absolutely gorgeous song. It's uh, I, I did write it down uh, mm. to spoil spoil it a little bit. I did th- <laughs> write that down as uh, mm. one of my favorite yeah. songs. Um, but uh, yeah, she's been popping up there. Trees of Eternity album did end up coming out uh, in 2016, mm-hmm. and I've listened to that, and it's it's similarly gorgeous. Um, mm-hmm. Not quite as heavy, just because Aaliyah didn't do... Her name was Aaliyah Stanbridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, she didn't do... Uh, she's uh, not Finnish, is she? She is not. She is South African. Ah. Uh, she's South African, then moved to Sweden, uh, and then, you know, was in the sort of the Swedish metal uh, community there. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes went by Aaliyah Star, uh, Starbridge, mm-hmm. uh, that sort of thing. But, uh, uh, yeah, just, just beautiful voice on her. And really just beautiful woman i've seen pictures of her and Mm. goodness she was she was stunning Mm -hmm. but uh uh yeah it was obviously a very very big event in yuho's life and it's kind of colored everything that he's worked on since then and so this album was i mean you don't you almost don't want to say it but it's like what better life event could you have to work off of for a mm-hmm. doom metal album than it than tragedy yeah than tra- like you, you don't you don't want to say it because it's like it, it trivializes the death into being like oh you know she died but we got this amazing album out of it you right. don't you don't want to say that but no. it's it's there is something to be said for for turning your sorrow and your grief into something beautiful that might help somebody else process their own problems that they're right. going through uh, and it, like is because that's just what art is. That's what art is about mm-hmm. uh, at its core is, is, you know, turning whatever emotions you're feeling, whether it's happiness or mm-hmm. sadness or whatever it is and turning that mostly into sadness. <laughs> it seems to be that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was just reading today. Uh, I was on, on Twitter. It was Kevin Smith talking about the fact that ever since he got married and had a child, his movies have gone to shit. <laughs> they're, they're all terrible since then. I'm happy and they all suck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there is there yeah. is something to be said about that for some people at least. I right. think there are, there are some people that seem to be very happy people and also make great uh, you know great art and material. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it, it, you know it was absolutely gorgeous uh, album, gorgeous production on this. Mm. My goodness. Yeah. Oh, the guitar sound is amazing. Oh, the guitar sound is so good. Yeah. I I love it. It's so thick and yeah. heavy. 
and uh, well, it uh, needs to be because we, we like in doom, in doom metal, you yeah, have it's to. It's doom metal. Yeah. Uh, it would be. It can be categorized as death doom, also mm-hmm. a, a gothic metal mm-hmm. is uh, a, a term I've heard attached to this album sure. and swallow the sun in general. And I think sort of the gothic aspect is really. Uh, uh, put in there by uh, uh, I believe it's uh, Miko is the uh, the lead singer. Mm-hmm. His uh, voice is very low. Yes, he has a, this very low, you know, operatic kind of. Uh, is it, would you call that a bass or a baritone? I'd say it's a baritone. It's a baritone. Yeah, uh, but a very very deep uh, mm-hmm. f- singing voice. Um, and now, does also, he do the, the the screaming? Yes. He so he does both of that. Yes, that's, uh, that's amazing. He does the very the deep the very mm-hmm. deep clean sung vocals and then the both the growls and the mm-hmm. higher screams. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his his screaming vocal range is split you know evenly fifty fifty between uh, this very deep very low growl mm-hmm. and this very high uh, uh, shriek mm-hmm. uh, that he does. Uh, the I believe their keyboardist is a new member of the band, and he does the backing vocals that are the clean backing vocals that are a bit higher, okay. uh, uh, and harmonizes a lot with Miko. Uh, and uh, it was I think that was a great addition to the album because I've listened mm-hmm. to some of their early work, and it's just it's missing that extra element just mm-hmm. a little bit uh, of of that extra vocalist providing sort of a, a contrasting mm-hmm. voice to his very low and very <laughs> operatic. Mm-hmm. type voice uh, it, to talk about my experience with this album a little bit I've, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before but I had no idea mm-hmm. who Swallow the Sun was I'd never heard of them Yeah. Uh, before this last March when this album came out mm-hmm. and our local record store put out a video on Facebook showing out uh, showing out are showing off mm-hmm. all of the new vinyl that they had gotten in the store in this new shipment and there I saw the album art, mm-hmm. and I was like, holy shit, that is gorgeous. That is, like, exactly, like, the aesthetic that I like. Right. I I mm-hmm. have to have this album no matter what it sounds like. <laughs> like, I doesn't matter what this album sounds like. I have to have this. Mm-ba, mm-ba, mm-ba. <laughs> <laughs> this is it would, be, it would be weird if it was a polka <laughs> album and it had that cover art. <laughs> like, I kind of knew it had to be, like, some sort of metal or, or, yeah. or some sort of weird sort of gothic type thing. Uh, and I, like, I saw it and I was just, I have to have this. If, mm-hmm. if for nothing else than, than to just have, you know, shown there. Right. Uh, and so when I went to the record store the next day after work, I was like, hey, do you still have that Swallow the Sun album? Mm-hmm. And by that point, I I'd, I'd found out that they were a, a doom metal band from Finland. And sure. this is their new album that had just come out. Uh, and uh, they were like, well, no, no, we actually already sold it. But uh, really, we'll get a new one in mm-hmm. and we can put your name down. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> so that was a couple of weeks later when I got a text from them saying, hey, your album's here. And nice. Immediately rushed off to go pick it up. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I've been enjoying it ever since. Uh, it's just it's it's a, a, a really gorgeous album. You know, I feel bad that I don't collect more uh records or, or CDs or any kind of music like that I, I now stream it all because I've got these children I was like dad I'm hungry you know? <laughs> how dare they feed them okay and spend money and yeah I like for me it's it's yeah. it, it gets to the point sometimes where it's like I haven't spent money lately sure and you're you're single and young and yeah single and young and my whole life ahead of me right you know? All this I mean, stuff and just and you just wait. I mean, one of these days, one of your bitches is going to call you <laughs> and say, "Honey, we're going to have a baby," and you're going to go, "Oh no!" And then you're going to be for the rest of your life yep. spending money because they got to eat. Oh God, yeah, yeah. One of these many, one of these many uh, women that I <laughs> that I cavort with. Yes, constantly. Mm-hmm. Maybe it'll be your Tuesday night. She'll be calling you. <laughs> yep, my Tuesday night. Yeah. Then my little black book that I have. Sure. I, you know my my uh, my book like. Uh, uh, Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, Ted Danson's character from Cheers. Oh, Sam Malone. Yeah, yeah. Sam Malone's yeah. book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, my my version of Sam Malone's booty call book. Because <laughs> I have one of those. Yeah, you do. He does. Believe me, he does. Yep. Uh, but for the time being, I'm enjoying being being able to uh, spend mm-hmm. money on vinyl and D and D books. And Indeed. And new hats and whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> you know, I was telling you, I sent you a text message yesterday about uh, what this album did to me. 
Uh, yeah. I was in my kitchen doing dishes or, you know, and next thing you know, I, I unconsciously wandered over to the window and pensively stared out. Just staring. It was, it would have been even better if it was raining. Man. Yeah, it would have been better had it been raining. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that was, and it just seems to have that sort yeah. of effect. It I does. feel it's an extremely, you know, it's a very contemplative album. Mm-hmm. It's a slow album. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, that's kind of part of the reason why I've struggled to pull the trigger on this mm-hmm. with, you know, when we're actually talking about it, because it's just kind of happened that every time I've wanted to bring this, I've had like a bad week. Yeah. And I just didn't want to have to listen to this because it would make me even more sad. Sure. Uh, but this week I'm having a good week. Having so. a good week. And, and this the album does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. It's it's more uplifting than right. it is sad. And it's it's mm-hmm. more thought provoking than it is, uh, uh, you know, sort of dragging you down into this sea of bad thoughts. It's right. it's, it's more lifting you up. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I, I really feel like that is the ultimate message of the album. And the, the message, according to the band members themselves, mm-hmm. uh, the idea behind this album uh, is death is stronger than life, but love is stronger than death. And I think that's beautiful. That is beautiful. That's gorgeous. Uh, uh my question for you right now is, mm-hmm. does this slap? Yes, this slaps. It slap. See, I said no. You said no. I think it slaps. Well, I mean, it doesn't slap in the, you know, make me rock out sense. Yeah. It slaps in the, I really enjoyed this album. Okay. Sense. Well, to, yeah, for me, because the slap is whatever you want it to be. Sure. For me, the slap is usually, you know, a, a function of tempo. Mm-hmm. And this being a doom metal album, it does not have that. That being said... So is there any doom metal album that would slap for you? I, d- I haven't come across one. Really? I feel like... I, like I No, like, doom metal will get me to headbang, mm-hmm. but it's not going to make me mosh. Okay. Like, there's a, a significant difference there. If I can mosh to it, it probably slaps. Mm-hmm. But if I... If, like, this... I can't mosh to this. No. No, you can't. It will be the slowest mosh pit in the world. You can contemplatively look out the window. Yes, yeah. precisely. Yeah. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it not slapping. No. It's it's just, you know, uh, for me, if I say this album slaps, mm-hmm. and if I'm recommending it to someone, I'm like, hey, check this out, this slaps. To me, that is an indication for them to know yeah. that they can listen to this album and be like, fuck yeah, this is great, yeah! Rock and roll! Exactly. Yeah. All right. Exactly okay. like okay. that. For me, that's what the slap right. means. But the slap means mm-hmm. whatever you think it means. I want to make that abundantly clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I was looking around. Thankfully, there was a, a list on the Wikipedia page here uh, yeah. for reviews that uh, people had done. No Metacritic score, but... Uh, mm-hmm. Reviews right there on the Wikipedia page that I could then average, uh, and it came out to about 80%. 80%. Which I think is a, a, a fairly good number. Yeah. Uh, it should be said, this album does follow their their most recent album before this, which came out in 2014, called mm-hmm. Songs from the North, Volume 1, 2, and 3, mm-hmm. and that is because it is a triple album. Wow. Uh, the first uh, disc on the album is... Songs more like what is on uh, this album, uh, uh, sort of a mix of the clean and and screamed vocals Mm -hmm. and the heavy parts with the more acoustic parts. Uh, The second part is an entirely acoustic experience. Mm -hmm. Or acoustic, as a friend of mine Acoustic, yes. Acoustic. And then part three Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. Funeral Doom. Right. It's (laughs) it's super heavy, Mm -hmm. super deep, super dark, lots of growled vocals. Like, just, they they went... Full on with the darkness, nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was. It's a gargantuan album, uh, and this one, you know, was a, a lot more succinct, mm-hmm. uh, taking bits and pieces and, and sort of putting them in every song instead of having the three parts and in that, you know, that mm-hmm. sort of business. Um, what's your favorite song on the album? Uh, I'm trying to. This whole time, I'm trying to remember track. Uh, I can go I grab my, my vinyl that we took off the table yeah, when I spilled would, would my you spill beer. Would you spill the beer? Would you grab the vinyl so I can see the, the, the track name? Because I, I wasn't actually looking at my phone while I was... It, the, the, the third track is actually the one I really like. Yeah. Yeah, I like Firelights. It was a okay. good song. Clouds on Your Side was obviously yeah. a, a brilliant pick. I, re- I really do like Clouds on Your Side. Mm-hmm. I love the part when it, it breaks down and he's just going... Uh, uh, I wish I could still growl. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hurt myself because I've got something. I've got something extra going on with my throat. You got some nodules? 
Uh, well, I mean, that, those mm-hmm. are always there. This week, I, th- I don't know if there's been something going on with mm-hmm. like one of my tonsils or my adenoids or something, but something in there is kind of swollen. Really? It's not as bad today. Yesterday, it was pretty bad. But uh, yeah, there's something extra going on, but I really don't want to aggravate any of that uh, going on. But there's a part in Clouds on Your Side where he uh, uh, just growls as though like things fall apart. And yeah. That. I really enjoy that. Um, let's see. I also, I really like the title track. Yeah. I, I really, really enjoy the title track. Uh, the the last, um, I almost want to call it a breakdown. It's not really a breakdown. No. It's doom. Right. Uh, but the last series of slams, I guess, uh, mm. at the end, uh, in the in the last portion of the song, always makes me want to just, just headbang. But a very slow headbang. Yeah, it's a slow headbang, yeah. but it's just boom, 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 boom. It's really, really good. I really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate to say this, but this is an, an album that would actually sound really good if you were to say do something that was recently legal in California. Oh, <laughs> are you talking about the Gonge, <laughs> the um, the Mary Jane? Yeah, the, the Mary Jane, uh, the Chronic. Yeah. If, well, we could just well, I could take a trip up to Canada. You couldn't take a trip. I up am to not Canada. allowed in the country yet. You're not allowed in the country yet. Yeah, uh, perhaps someday soon. Someday soon. I'm, I'm married to a Canadian, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, you could. I feel like this would be an album that would work with that. Yeah. I, I don't think you would want to do any psychedelic much stronger than that because I feel no. like the emotional qualities of this album would uh, right. end with you having a very bad trip and in a mess of tears. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did that once. I ate a whole bag of mushrooms and uh, listened to a Residence album, and that was a terrible day. I can imagine. So I like the Residence because yeah. they're really weird. Yeah. Uh, but you had a terrible trip but I because ter- they're really weird. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I I wouldn't know. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I, I can imagine. I wouldn't know, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> wink. No, I know we're not winking. There's no winking. There's no there's no winking yeah. here. Uh, let's Kale's see. a good boy. Yeah. Who's a good boy? Also, drug dealers are scary. Yeah. They are. That's kind of the reason I quit doing drugs. Not because I didn't want to do drugs anymore, because I didn't want to have to deal with the people who were going to sell me drugs. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, no one likes their drug dealer. Right. I don't think, or any anyone who even, like, I feel like, is the cool weed dealer a, a thing of the past? I, I don't know. Maybe. Has there ever been an actually cool weed dealer besides Tommy Chong? There has been. There was a guy that I, I, I knew, uh, having a hard time remembering his name. Now, I stole his girlfriend. Um, <laughs> of course you did. I did, but uh, <laughs> he also used to build custom computers for people. And uh, I remember going over to his house once, and he was building a, a machine. He was brilliant uh, and sold weed. And uh, of course, and so we sat down and we smoked weed with him. And then I felt bad as I was leaving because I heard him in the background behind me as we we're going out the door, going, "Oh, sh- oh shit! Wait, um, how do I? Oh, I." Uh, <laughs> trying to put his computer yeah, together. Yeah, he's trying to remember where, 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 where it was doing. Where does this go? Where is oh, this? Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we had to come over and get him high. <laughs> you seem to have had a habit of, of doing that, of getting people who have work to do high. Yeah. <laughs> they That guy and then Voivod. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's happened to me, too. My, my old boss at a strip club I used to deal blackjack at. Ooh, I've got the the Wicked Juicy IPA now because he got a Shiner uh, Brewery Tour yeah. six pack. This is really good. Yeah, is it? Yes, Wicked Juicy IPA, very good. Nice, made by my sh- uh, Shiner. 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 Uh, anyway, <laughs> so your boss while you're doing blackjack. Oh yeah, yeah. He said, you know, hi. Oh, he was from Louisiana. Hi, OJ. You wanna? It's a really slow night. You wanna? You wanna get stoned? I'm like uh, that is the weirdest New Orleans talk, accent but, I've ever heard. He, he he was a weird guy. He was this really tall, excessively skinny dude with coke bottle glasses and a really long beard. He was awesome. Loved the guy. He uh, sounds like he would get his own employees high. Yeah, which he did. And then and then I left and because I, I had to leave, I had work part. I was working part time in radio already. Okay, this is way back when, and I had to call his wife at uh, two o'clock in the morning and say. Hey, listen to the radio and see if I sound like shit. (laughs) Did you sound like shit? She said, no, Jay, you sound fine. You sound fine, honey. (laughs) You just keep doing what you're doing. 
<laughs> I mean, I feel like if uh, <laughs> if radio announcing couldn't be done high mm. on weed, yeah, <laughs> the seventies, the sixties and seventies would have been just fucking gone. Oh, sure, yeah. There would have been there would have been nobody on the radio. No. Uh, uh, that all changed, of course. Yes, that <laughs> supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, what were we talking else? about? Oh, fuck, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I swear we're not high. <laughs> uh, well, we had talked about favorite songs, but sure. we, we got that out of the way. I also way. wrote down Stone Wings originally, but I kind of I kind of changed that. I don't Did know. Like, for me, it's kind of like it's hard to pick a favorite mm-hmm. I, I really like all of these songs they're all great uh, they're all really good there is also a really cool uh, sort of prelude that they didn't fit on the album mm-hmm. that uh, they put out as a single called I believe it's Lumina Aria mm-hmm. uh, something like that uh, mm-hmm. that features Einar Selvik uh, from really? uh, uh, Wadruna in there wow uh, and yeah it's it's that one's mostly an atmosphere track Luna Aria uh, is called L- Lumi- Lumina Aria Lumina Aria something like that right uh, you'll if you look, you know, in their singles and EPs and whatnot on cool. streaming services, you should be able to find that. It is pretty much entirely an atmosphere <laughs> track. There's, I don't think there's any distorted guitar in it actually really? at all. Uh, but it's it's still very good. And very Does it good. come with a list of people that you're going to kill? No. With needle? Never mind. You know what? Just never mind. Just forget I said oh, anything. Oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was made by Arya Stark. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Never mind. Forget it. You dick. Uh, anyway, uh, metal. What metal. Uh, what metal do you give this? What metal do I give this? Yeah, we're the bronze medalist podcast. We give albums medals. Yes, we do. Um, I would give this one. I would give this one a silver. I w- okay. I would give it a silver. It's definitely not. I'm definitely not a broad. Beautiful, beautiful album. Uh, it's a it's a bit low energy. Yes. But but it's so beautiful. That's yes. why I gave it a slap, but only a silver medal. Okay. I I, I can feel you there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you kind of swayed me a little bit. I I wrote down gold, but mm-hmm. but honestly, I I'd be more tempted to give it a silver as well. Mm-hmm. Simply because this is, for me, a gold album kind of has to be an album that I could listen to at any time. Right. And there are definitely moods that I would get in where I don't want to listen to this album. The the very fact that, you know, we were going to do this episode three months ago and right. didn't, <laughs> I think is yeah. a testament to that, that, that I can't listen to this album at all, uh, you know, at any point. Mm-hmm. I have to be in a, a decent mood, so. Like the movie Requiem for a Dream. I God, mean, yeah. great movie, but oh, Jesus, don't make me watch that again. Or, you know? the, or the documentary, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Dear Zachary, a letter from a, oh. a letter from a father <laughs> to a son. <laughs> that one, <laughs> that one. I don't know if there's any mood other than I've not seen this documentary before mm-hmm. that you could be in to want to watch that. Right. I have watched it twice, though, interestingly enough, and I kind of want to watch it again. Sure. It is very well made. And mm-hmm. now that I know, you know, the the horrible sadness that will. Uh, befall me. Upon you can brace for it. This. I can yeah. brace for it sure. a little bit better. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's I, mm-hmm. I can understand why most people would not want to watch that documentary twice. Mm-hmm. It's amazing though. Mm-hmm. And if you've not watched it, I, rec- I recommend that you watch it. Just have a box of tissues ready because it's going to hit you. Sure. Uh, and also don't look up because anything. You're gonna, because you're going to masturbate. <laughs> oh, you. No. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. No. Okay, all right. Not on that one. All no. Right. No. Oh, yeah. If you, if you are going to watch that, don't look up anything. If you're like. It's going if, cold. Yeah, going completely cold. Don't know anything about it. Uh. Anyway, so silver, silver medals, silver medal of us. It's good. It's yeah, Very it's good. good. It's it's amazing. It's beautiful. It, I will listen just, to it again. Yeah, uh, and I recommend it to mm-hmm. anyone out there who who wants to listen to a, just a beautiful piece of metal. It is mm-hmm. it is gorgeous music. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of go in knowing that it is it is a little you know a little sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is it is a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> Way to We're be, a serious podcast. Way to be pointy it there, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a little right. sad. It can be a bit depressive, but mm-hmm. I think ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, the album is very much in line with the uh, the sort of the thesis that they I got what they were earlier. going for. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely accomplished what they were trying to do with this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, when a shadow's forced into the light by Swallow the Sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, next week, what are we doing? 
Uh, well, I, I molded over. There were several albums I, I wanted to do. There was one I sort of landed on, uh, but then I switched. Okay. I want to do No More Color by Coroner. Okay. Right. I, I thought maybe you'd chosen a different creator album. You had mentioned that earlier today, but we're doing No More Color yeah. by Coroner. Yes. Uh, what kind of band is are they? They're a, a Swiss a metal band, uh, I think. Swiss? They're from Switzerland. Mm. Um, they, uh, they, I think two of them, I think Ron might have been, I'm trying to remember now which ones were roadies for Celtic Frost. Okay. Uh, and then they just made their own band. Hey, you said it right. You know, I, I said it that way. I, I said it that way so that I didn't have to have the conversation with you. <laughs> yes, I've finally worn you down. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's my exercise in avoidance <laughs> that led me to say yes. Celtic Frost. <laughs> I finally wore you down. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. It's a great album. Okay. Um, um, they're very talented. But what kind of music would you call it? Was the um, question. It's sort of. Uh, it's it's progressive thrash, sort of. I can dig it. Mm -hmm. All right. So next week, no more color mm -hmm. by, I forgot coroner. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right. Because I still had creator in my head. Right. Uh, no more color by coroner mm -hmm. next week. All right. Cool. I am into it. So if you are into this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meaning this podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you want to uh, always be notified when we put up a new episode, mm -hmm. uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, we always there's a post attached to it whenever a new episode goes up. You can also follow us on iTunes for however longer that lasts, yeah, because or they're, whatever change they're doing something that goes different, through. Yeah. Uh, whatever change that goes through, if you mm. if you follow us or subscribe to us or whatever the function is on the podcast app there, sure, uh, you'll also get notifications on your phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, to that end, um, when those notifications pop, goodness, I'm just. <laughs> Are you sure you're not high? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Quite. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, to that end, when those notifications do pop up, uh -huh. uh, you can also share those with your friends and mm -hmm. say, hey, I like this. You should like this. <laughs> or I had to sit through this. You should have to sit through this. <laughs> Impose your misery on your friends. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. Congratulations. Congratulations. Ba, 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 ba. I'm fucking it. Let's see. What is this? Ruby Redbird? It's supposed to taste like grapefruit. See, the thing with Shiner is you huh? never, like, there is no, there seems mm -hmm. to be no visual indication other than, I guess, the, God damn it! <laughs> the thing with Shiner is if you knock it over, it's going to foam all over the place. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, your vinyl off the table. Yeah. Bottle. Oh. Damn it. <laughs>